Herbaceous plants include tall grasses and low-lying, non-woody herbs and wildflowers. These plant communities provide critical habitat and food for many animals. Herbaceous plants grow in open desert landscapes, alpine meadows, remnant prairies, and Mediterranean grasslands. As these areas burst with color, they attract wildflower-seeking visitors, wildlife, and pollinators. Each herbaceous ecosystem is maintained by a delicate balance of temperature, moisture, and soil. In these natural ecosystems, plants and animals have evolved to coexist in healthy communities. Unfortunately, over the past 70 years, human-caused air pollution has been changing the composition of the plants in these areas. In recent years, we've come to realize the long-term effects. Oftentimes, air pollution is high in nitrogen. Through precipitation and wind, the nitrogen is transported across the landscape. Nitrogen acts as a fertilizer and in high enough concentrations reduces overall plant diversity. Nitrogen tends to promote the most pollution tolerant, fastest growing plants, such as annual grasses and invasive plants, at the expense of perennial grasses and wildflowers. This leads to simpler plant communities that provide less nectar and pollen for pollinators and lower quality forage for wildlife. Scientists are trying to understand how much pollution these areas can absorb before significant flora and fauna are lost. The amount of pollution, or the tipping point, that causes one of these areas to shift from a healthy herbaceous community to an impacted community is called a critical load. If you remember from the introductory video, a critical load is the level of deposition at which an ecosystem begins to experience harm. When a critical load is reached or exceeded, ecosystem damage is expected to begin. Identifying this threshold helps land managers understand risks to the land so they can work with state and local governments to minimize pollution. Let's look at two different places where scientists have studied these changes. The deserts of Southern California and the mountains of Colorado. The sensitive desert ecosystem of Southern California, situated in the Mojave Desert Air Basin, is often mistaken as desolate and empty due to extreme summer temperatures and limited visible wildlife. But following cool winter rains, the landscape transforms and explodes with flowers, creating a paradise for desert tortoises, kangaroo rats, and many other species. Being just east of Los Angeles, however, this ecosystem receives continuous air pollution from vehicles, industry, and local farms. As this air pollution blows through the mountain passes, it deposits excess nitrogen into the soil, affecting which plants grow and how fast they grow during the winter rains. As a result, fast-growing invasive grasses with low nutritional value spread quickly and crowd out the more desirable and slower growing native wildflower species. With the onset of summer and its extreme temperatures, the native flowers die back and only the dried grasses remain, leaving a continuous bed of kindling. In part due to these invasive grasses, we are seeing increased wildfire activity in these areas. These unusual and undesirable fires lead to tree and shrub loss and eventually habitat loss for desert tortoises, desert iguanas, and kangaroo rats. Fortunately, the air pollution from Los Angeles has significantly decreased over the last 30 years, so the risk of too much nitrogen, or critical load exceedance, is dropping across the desert. The problem is, however, once invasive grasses become established, it is difficult for the wildflowers to return. To preserve these vast desert landscapes and the diversity that lives within them, we need to keep air pollution below the critical load. Now let's turn to the mountains of Colorado, in the high alpine meadows of the Rocky Mountains, where trees don't grow and mountain flowers abound, a pollution response similar to the deserts is happening. 
These areas are often covered by snow from November to May, but as the summer sun rises and the snow recedes, life emerges from the rocky soils. These grasses, shrubs, and flowers provide food for pikas, mountain goats, and elk, and attract visitors with their colorful landscapes. These high alpine meadows are especially at risk from a triple threat of air pollution coming from the Colorado Plains. Cars in the cities, animal agriculture, and drilling for fossil fuels. Winds blow this nitrogen-rich pollution from the Colorado Plains to the mountaintops where it lands and disrupts plant and freshwater communities. Many of these mountain meadows may be protected from invasive species due to their remoteness from human settlements. But the nitrogen deposition still has an impact. As the nitrogen fertilizes the soil, some of the less desirable species grow faster and outcompete the species preferred by the local wildlife. Scientists have used these alpine meadows as a research laboratory to determine the critical load for these ecosystem changes. They apply fertilizer, simulating nitrogen deposition, to an area at increasing rates to determine how much pollution the environment can absorb before a change occurs. The nitrogen deposition level that causes one of these areas to shift from a healthy herbaceous community to a destabilized community is the critical load. With this study's results, along with other research, land managers are working with Colorado communities to voluntarily reduce emissions. For example, when wind shifts could transport air pollution to sensitive high alpine meadows, agriculturists can modify their practices to reduce pollution. The deserts of Southern California and the mountains of Colorado are two of the many examples of how plant communities are changing under the influence of human-caused pollution. Across the U.S., plant communities are at risk of shifting away from the plants and flowers that act as food for omnivores, herbivores, and pollinators towards less diverse and more unhealthy communities. We can make small changes individually and large changes together to reduce pollution and protect our shared natural landscapes from nitrogen pollution.